just sit down right there. You guys are doing good today. We, uh, we have multiple purposes. Uh, we're going to learn about God's Word today. We're going to learn, we're going to uh, 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 lose about 10 pounds. I think that's probably what we, I'm, I think I lost, I don't know, eight, nine in the first service. I'm ready to lose that next 10 right now, and it's going to happen. I have uh, this message. Uh, we're walking through the book of 2 Peter, and we're just taking it, you know, line by line, just going through the thing and letting God speak, letting God talk to us, letting God shape us. And, and this, this, uh, this message this morning is something, man. It is something because it says that you need to watch out. Say, watch out. You got to watch out. Watch out. Watch out. You got to look out for it. You got to watch out. And, 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 and the thing about it is that it's saying you got to watch out for people like me. Uh-oh. But you got to watch out. For preachers, you got to watch out for teachers. You got to watch out for leaders because they are dangerous. You, you, you got to be, you got to be careful what you're, what you're feeding your soul. You got to be careful what you're believing. You got to be careful what you're digesting. You got to, you got to be careful what you're becoming. And Peter's going to walk through this thing. And see, this is nothing new. He's talking about the first century. We're in the 21st century. He's talking about the first century. So it's not like it's something new. This has existed since Christianity began. And it's uh, this idea that there are these false teachers. False teachers. Teachers that... And leaders that tell you not what you need to know, but, you, but what you want to hear. Leaders that tell you what you want to hear, not what you need to know, not what God wants you to know, but what you want to hear. How many people in here want to follow a false teacher or leader or preacher? Nobody. There's a problem with that. We love them. We love the false teacher. We love the false leader. You may be saying, what? what? No, I don't. Yes, you do, because they tell us exactly what we want to hear. They tell us to believe what we already believe. They tell us that it's good for us to hate who we already hate. They tell us we should be against who we're already against. They validate what we already believe. And so we are thirsty for them and hungry for them. This is why the world did this. I'll just say it simply. This is why the world killed Jesus. Because Jesus said things, some of the things people liked, some of the things people hated. Like when he told the Roman soldier that he had more faith than the people in Israel when the Romans were occupying Israel. And see, we don't like to hear news we don't agree with. We like to just indulge ourselves and, say, and validate our own points. And we're not going to listen to anybody else. We got to be careful. 
The, the, the Bible's the, the, he, Peter is going to be crystal. And it's not just Peter. It's Peter, Paul, it's Jesus. I mean, Jesus said all kinds of things. They hated Jesus because he made a Samaritan person the hero of a story. Man, we don't want to hear that. We don't, they, they didn't want to hear that. When Jesus said, you, you eat my flesh and drink my blood, they didn't want to hear that. That's bad news. That was something hard. That was something difficult. That was something they didn't agree with. And so they want to write him off. See, this is the problem. We think the true leader, we think the true teacher, we think the true preacher is the one that says what we already agree with. And if we don't agree with it, we turn them off, shut them out, or leave. And Peter's going to say, then you're following the wrong person. Then you're following a false person. Teacher, oh my goodness, this is just not going to be fun today. I mean, this is, this is the, the thing. It's going to be hard. We've got some great baptisms at the end of this worship service. But we got to know they didn't kill Jesus for no reason. And we got to know we can't just be silos in our thinking or we will not hear from God. Jesus is not here to save America. Jesus is here to save Americans. Did you hear what I said? Jesus isn't here to save America. No. Jesus is here to save Americans. Who are Americans? Everybody in, everybody in. See, the problem we have is that you cannot, you can't follow two masters. And so much of the time we're following culture, we're following leaders, we're following politicians. We're following preachers. You can't follow preachers, leaders, politicians, and Jesus. You can't follow both of them. And what we end up doing is we end up fit following the leaders, preachers, teachers, politicians. We end up following them and listening to Jesus. Because it's easy to follow politicians, preachers, teachers, and leaders. Because all they want is your vote or influence or control or something like that. Jesus wants your life. It's easy to give your vote. It's easy to give your influence. It's really hard to give your life. But Jesus says you have to follow him. You can listen to all the others, but you have to follow him. And he's only given us really two commands. You gotta love God and you gotta love who else? Everybody else. You got to love the people you like. You got to love the people you don't like. You got to love your neighbors. You got to love Republicans. You have to love Democrats. You can't be, you know, gossiping or slandering or calling names or, and be following Jesus at the same time. You with me? I know it's rough in here. All right, let's just see what the Bible says. Y'all stand up if you would, please. Okay. 
Chapter 2 says this. But there were also false prophets among the people. This is even before Jesus' time. And there will be false teachers among you. And there's going to be false teachers now. And they secretly in, introduce deceptive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. And look at that. Many will follow. Many will follow their depraved conduct. And they'll bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers, preachers, politicians, cable news, entertainers, leaders, whatever. In their greed, they will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. And now look at this. If God didn't spare the angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, oh my word. Talk about bad news, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment. If he didn't spare the ancient world when he brought the flood, on the ungodly preachers, or he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is go of what is go made them an <laughs> what in the world made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. And if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless. And I'll skip to chapter, uh, verse 9. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. This is the word of God for the people of God. I mean, this is God. If this is going to be one of you. Can go ahead and sit this is one of the most important messages you're going to hear probably in your lifetime in the timeliness of it. It's like, how do you avoid following the wrong people? How, how do you know? Let's just, let's just look at, let's just look, look, look here. Verse one, okay, they're going to be false prophets among you. Nothing's new. They've always been around. And what, what he's saying is, you got a brain. I've given you a brain. You are smart. Don't get took. Don't get bamboozled. Don't get hoodwinked. You're too important to get sidelined by somebody else's lie. The, the, Jesus said, be wise. Be smart. Don't be dumb. Don't be stupid. Don't just take it all in. Be, be wise in your mind. See, some of it is our own fault because we want to just keep believing what we already believe and not be challenged by what could be actually true. It's so much easier, just like the Hebrews wanted to believe that they were still God's chosen people and that the gospel wasn't for anybody else except for the Jews. And Jesus was like, no, that is not right. It's going to be for the Romans. It's going to be for the Samaritans. It's going to be to the ends of the earth. And they didn't like it. They're like, you're not being patriotic. You're not being loyal. You're not being faithful. Secretly, they introduce these heresies. See, it's just, they, they just said something. Make, make, making up a story. They're, they're, they're manipulating the people so that they can get what they want. People like me, standing up in front of a crowd like you. I can tell you exactly, I know exactly what you want. And a lot of it's what I'm, is not what I'm saying today. And I know that's true. 
See, the, 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 these false teachers, false prophets, they say what you want to hear, but they say it for the reason of getting control, getting your money, getting your influence, getting your vote, getting a job, whatever it is. See, the thing is, and you know this as a parent, if you really love something like your child, sometimes you have to say things that they don't agree with, that they don't value, that they don't uh, like. Well, when God speaks to us, he's got to do the same thing because there's plenty of things we need to do, we need to change, we need to have different that we don't agree with. You know, in the, in the book of 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 4, uh, starting with verse 3 and following, Paul says, the time is coming. Hey, everybody, time is coming when the people are not going to tolerate sound doctrine, but they're going to arrange for themselves, accumulate for themselves people who will just say what they want to hear. Just tickle your ears with things you already agree with so you can hate the people you really want to hate or reject the people you really want to reject or disown the people you really already want to disown. But Jesus doesn't give us that option. Even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them. I mean... They were denying that Jesus rose from the dead. Preachers were denying Jesus rose from the dead in the first century, in the very beginning. It's nothing new. People, you, man, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a seminary professor that will tell you that the Bible's not true and Jesus isn't real and he, there's no virgin birth and he didn't rise from the dead and he's preaching all over the United States of America. Peter's saying, watch out. Many, look at that, verse 2. Many, not some. He says, many will follow them. Why? Because they love what they're hearing. They love it. I think I get rationale. I mean, they use the Bible to crucify Jesus. You can use the Bible to justify anything you want. By the way, since this is talking about me, let me say, do not follow me. If what I say comes out of this Bible, follow that. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why I go through the scripture with you every single Sunday. I don't just tell you my opinions. I don't just give you what I think. I'm not smart enough to do that anyway. I just go straight by the Bible. I show you what it says. I point out where it says it. And then I say the implications of it. Then you have to decide if you're going to believe it or not. In just a couple of more passages, it says that those leaders, those pastors, those preachers who deceive people, that the darkest recesses of hell are reserved for those people. I'm not going there. Y'all just going to have to deal with it. I'm going to give you what the Bible says, and that's it, because I'm not going to the darkest places in hell or the lightest places in hell or hell at all. I'm not going. I'm, I made my arrangement to skip hell and I'm not going to rearrange that. Are we good? They will bring the way of truth into disrepute. It, it, see, the dis the seduction makes it so hard to see. That's what's hard for us, is the seduction makes it hard to see. Because we already believe it, because we want to believe it, because we want the justification for it.
Jesus wants your life. He does not want you to listen to him. He wants you to follow him. He wants you to what him? He wants you to what? He wants you to follow. You don't follow with your mouth. Okay, you don't follow with your ears. Okay, you follow with your behavior, what you do, who you love, how you love them, who you talk about, the way you talk about them. In their greed, this gives you the motivation, these teachers or leaders or preachers or whoever, they will exploit you with fabric, exploit you. They are trying to exploit you. And some of us are falling right in line with the exploitation and cheering for them while they exploit us. But Jesus is like, you're too valuable for that. You're too smart for that. You're too important for that. Your influence is too great for that. You've been given the gift of God, namely the Holy Spirit, right? You've got a job to do. That job is to make disciples on this planet. Everything else is moonlighting. If God didn't spare the angels when they sinned. See, th this, is, this is the bad news. This is the hard news right here. You don't get to decide who God is or how God is. You don't get to decide. It's already decided for you. And then he explains who God is and how God is. See, God loves you. God loves you more than you could possibly love yourself or your children or your wife or your husband or your family. God loves you more than anybody else could possibly. And so he doesn't like to see his creation perverted, taken, manipulated, twisted, exploited. He doesn't like seeing that. God didn't spare the angels but they were sent to hell. Didn't spare the ancient world, but killed them with a flood. This is who God is. This is how serious God is. He condemned Sodom and Gomorrah. Do you know that God? Do you know that God? Or is it just like, well, you know, Mean God, we're just like this, you know, my, my, my buddy God over here, you know, the man upstairs, you know, or hey, God is love, and he understands my situation, he understands, you know, where I am, he understands all right, he understands exactly, he understands that you don't care what he says, or who died for you, or what sin actually is, or what the Bible teaches. This is what God understands. Because that's what's true. We don't get to reshape God in our image. God is who God is. Oh, Jesus. Y'all okay? Okay. I'm telling you, I'm not going to hell, so I'm going to give you the truth. You just, I mean, you can choose to come, not come, leave, whatever. It's all right. I don't know. It's be okay. Uh, okay. To God be the glory. Here we go. Made them an example. I asked myself the question, to who? He made Sodom and Gomorrah an example. To who? He, he, he made the angels an example. To who? He made uh, the ancient world of Noah's flood and their corruption and their, you know, doing what is right in their own eyes an example. To who? To us. To you, to you, to you, to you, to you, to you, to, you, to me. An example to us. 
so that we would know. Everybody in here knows. Because of just reading this, because of hearing my voice, you know the way God is, and he is not playing games. Why? Because you are too important. The salvation of a human being is too important. Heaven and earth, heaven and earth are going to burn away, right? But you are going to live forever. Are we following Jesus? Or are we just listening to Jesus and following culture? Are we just listening to Jesus and then just, you know, this is the way the world works? Are we listening? We're just listening. See, Jesus didn't ever said, listen to me. He said, follow me. Do what I'm doing. In fact, he told the disciples. He told the disciples. He said, uh, this command I give to you, that you love each other the way I have loved you. He loved a traitor. Matthew was a traitor. He was a tax collector. See, we, we can't, if we're going to follow Jesus, we can't write people off. We can't decide these are the people I hate and these are the people I like and these are the people I, I'm going to talk about and these are the people I'm not. And these, see, we're not following Jesus when we do that. We're following culture. What does Jesus say? He says, uh, you know, you, you're going to love your friends and love those that love you and hate your enemies? What difference does that make? It doesn't make any difference at all. The whole world does that already. I'm going to tell you something different. Love those that you disagree with. Love those on the different side. How do we know? How do we avoid false teachers? Okay, Paul deals with this in 2 Timothy, and so I don't have to make up reasons. He writes them down. 2 Timothy, starting with verse 3, going through about verse 6, and he gives us four ways to avoid false teachers. And I'm going to give them to you right quick. And the first one is this. He says, be sober in all your situations. Be sober. He's saying be wise. He's saying be smart. He's saying, don't just sit there and drink it all in and just take what cable, listen, cable news is not telling you the truth. Okay, they're not telling you the truth. They are get, that is a program for entertainment that is profitable when a certain segment of the population pays for the advertising. It's a game. It's a product that is being sold to people. They shape the product in order to get more viewers. That's what it is. It is not truth. And you can't sit there and just drink it in, digest it, digest it, digest it, and think somehow or another you know what the truth is. It is not being sober. It's not being wise. It's not being smart. It's, it's impossible to follow Jesus. We're following somebody who doesn't know us, who's never benefited us, who doesn't care about us. We're never going to meet them, and yet we have sworn our allegiance to the way they think. Be sober in all that's wise. Don't think you're doing the kingdom of God any good by letting yourself get ripped off or hijacked and then calling it grace. Okay? It's not grace. It's stupidity. Okay? They, they, they were always trying to trick Jesus. They were always trying to trick him about coins, or about whether to give tax, pay taxes to Caesar. They were trying to trick him about, and these are the church people, trying to trick him about marriage. They got this uh, adulterous woman. They drug her down the street, and they were using the Bible to trip up Jesus 
in order to kill this woman. See, Jesus was sober in his mind. He was wise. He was smart. He, I mean, he was intelligent. He said, you be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Be sober. In all, don't panic. Don't get hysterical. See, don't exaggerate. The crowd that crucified Jesus... Those people that killed him, they didn't know anything about what was good. They, they just drank the Kool-Aid. They were just like, oh, they, they, he must have done something. Ah, oh, crucify him, crucify him. They saw him do miracles all over the, but crucify him. He must not have been what, he's, what I thought he was after. Crucify him, crucify him. And see, we can't just fall in line. Bah, bah, bah. We have to be smart. How do I avoid false teachers? Here's what the Bible says. Endure hardship. You know what a false teacher is never going to tell you? They're never going to say, hey, there's going to be a lot of hardship. If you follow me, it's going to be difficult If you follow me, you're going to have to suffer. That's how you know Jesus wasn't a false teacher. Because he said, in this world, you're going to be part of this world, you're going to have, anybody know, trouble. He said every day he's got enough trouble of its own. When he he said, are you going to follow me? You need to take up your easy life and follow me, right? 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 No, no, take up your comfort and follow me, right? Isn't that what he said? No, Jesus said, take up your cross. That's how you know he can, you can believe him. A false teacher's never gonna say that to you. Take up your cross and follow me. Endure, endure hardship. I want to talk about it. I want to say the difficult things. I know it's hard to hear. I know you can go to so many churches this morning and, 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 and you'll learn that, that, you know, if you're suffering or if you've, you're in a trial or in, you're in difficulty, then, then, you know, God doesn't want that for you and this shouldn't be happening to you and maybe you just need a little bit more faith or if you pray just a little bit longer. No, that is not what the Bible says. He says, endure hardship. If somebody's telling you that there's no downside, there's no hardship, there's no difficulties, there's no trials, don't follow that person. And let me, let me tell you this. Paul says endure it. And there's something about that that's very powerful. Endure it. He's not, what he's saying is, you know what? Yeah, difficult things are going to happen. Yeah, you're going to have trials. Yeah, you're going to have troubles. But take heart, God has already overcome the world. Listen, when it comes against you, stand up. Be bold. Be strong. You can do it. You have got the power of the Holy Spirit. You can stand in the middle of the storm and have hope. You can be in the middle of the problem and have grace. You can be in the middle of the trial and have all kinds of strength and confidence. That's what the gospel is for. Your light shines brightest in the darkest day. That trial's in your life. So people can look at you and go, man, I can't even believe you're able to even stand up. I can't believe you got a smile on your face. I can't believe you're still praying. I can't believe you're still going to church. I can't believe you still believe anything about the God that you say loves you. And then that's when you get to tell them, That that God died for me. That God died for me. 
not so that I could avoid hardship, so that I would have the power to stand up in the middle of it. See, they killed Jesus because they didn't want to hear what he had to say. Third thing, do the work. Just do the work. You know, so somehow we've gotten this idea that we don't need to work. I, in fact, uh, I went to seminary for a lot of different years, in three different places. And we had chapel every day at 10 o'clock. And I only remember one message from all those chapels. And it was a guy who preached on do the work. And I, remember, I can still remember what he said. He, he said, you're in ministry because you don't want to work. You can come in at 10 o'clock and leave at 3 o'clock and nobody knows and nobody really cares. You can knock off somebody else's sermons and plagiarize it as your own and nobody really cares. And then he said, the Bible says, do the work. If you don't work, you shouldn't get paid. And you may be saying right now, well, Smith, that's just not Christian. And what I want to say to you is this. Yes, it is. Toughen up. You know what the Bible says? You know what Paul says? If you don't work, you don't get to eat. Because the best thing in the world for you is not being a laggard or a slackered, or just a bum, right? That is not the best thing in the world for you, to live off somebody else. You are God's gift to this world. There's so much inside of you, and so much power in you, so many resources, so many gifts, so many talents. Use them to change the world. It says, fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your ministry. Last thing, fulfill your ministry. And then and we got to do some baptisms, okay? And I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, fulfill your ministry. Hey, do you have a ministry? Do you have a ministry? If you are following Jesus, then you have a ministry. If you are not following Jesus, then you don't have a ministry. If you don't have a ministry, then you are not following Jesus. Your ministry could be at school. Your ministry could be at work. Your ministry could be in your friend groups. Your ministry could be in Sunday morning children's program. Your ministry could be Sunday mornings parking cars. Your ministry could be in the uh, Sunday afternoon in the youth program. But you have to have a ministry. Jesus said, and we're following Jesus. What he said was, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Somewhere in the world, you have to be a part of a disciple-making machine. You have to be involved if you're following Jesus. Now, if you don't want to follow Jesus, that's fine. If you want to stay over there in the, in the camp where we're just listening to Jesus and just sort of playing that church thing, that's fine. I'm saying that's bad, but if that's your choice, that's your choice. What God is saying is you got to have a ministry. You got to have a place where you're served, where his gifts are moving through you into the world. It's only then that we can say we are making disciples, not, not just the people I like. We're making of all nations. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them. And we're going to have baptisms right now. Thank you.